fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty high-yo silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. He was more than a champion of law and order. He was a champion of justice, and no odds were too great for him when an innocent man, wrongly accused of a crime, appealed to him for help. Return with us now those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! We're heading for Apache Ridge. Tunnel's waiting on the trail ahead. Hey, oh, Silver, away! Dusk was falling in the hills near the town of Apache Ridge. A tall, masked man and an Indian put out their campfire, threw saddles on their powerful horses, and drew tight the cinches. There you are, old fellow. That'll hold. About ready, Tonto? Uh, me ready. It's ten miles to Apache Ridge. We should reach there before the moon starts to rise. Uh. We can't fail, Kimosabe. Rusty Baylor is depending on us. He turned himself over to the law when we promised to clear his name. Now we'll keep that promise. It'd be plenty hard, Mallory... Him he bad feller. Mallory runs this part of the country, Tonto, but he doesn't run us. Mm. Yep, that right. <laughs> Come on, get him on a scout. Hello, Silver! Away! Rudd Mallory was an influential figure in Apache Ridge. He owned several ranches, both cafes and held a controlling interest in the Stockman's Bank. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode toward the town, Rudd was seated at a corner table in his Ace High Cafe, drinking with a shifty-eyed man known only as Slick. <laughs> yeah, drink up, Slick. Drink up to the capture of one of the worst killers ever known around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, boss. Come on, throw it down, you. You bet. <laughs> Yeah, mighty tasty. <laughs> you know, Slick, when Rusty got away that time, I never did figure to lay eyes on him again. And here the marshal brings him back, and it turns out that Rusty just gave himself up. Didn't even have to, from what they say. I'll be doggone if I can figure it out. Yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> the main thing is, Rusty's gonna hang. And after he hangs, nobody's gonna ask no more questions about who killed Bull Brannigan. Shucks, it ain't been worrying you, has it, boss? I'm a careful man, Slick. Sure, I know, but I you don't know. believe in leaving no loose ends. Right now, even if Rusty wasn't hung, it ain't likely that anybody will start asking the wrong questions. 
On the other hand, you never can tell. Yeah. But a hanging will close the case. It'll be finished, done for, and everybody's in the clear. When will Rusty be tried? Can you keep something to yourself, Slick? You know me, boss. Rusty won't get tried. Huh? <laughs> a lynching, get it? You mean that they... I mean I ain't even taking chances there. You can't know for sure what a trial might turn up. But tomorrow I'm going to pass a word along among the boys. And if Rusty ain't been strung up by tomorrow night... Well, then I'm losing my grip. <laughs> no danger of you doing that. <laughs> There's Jay. It's lucky he don't know the whole story. Yeah, howdy, Jay. Evening, Rudd. Howdy, Slick. Howdy. Pull up a chair and set yourself down. Have a drink on the house. Sure, glad to. Another round, Lem. All right, coming up. Well, you heard about Rusty being brought back, didn't you, Jay? Yeah, and I was blame glad to know it. <laughs> well, you ought to be glad. He killed your uncle, didn't he? Cut it out, Rudd. I... You can never tell who might be listening. <laughs> Blamed if I ever seen anybody with less gumption than you got. Now, who could hear us at this table? Ain't even any windows close by. Yeah, but you You just... ain't got a guilty conscience, have you? You have to talk about it, Rudd. <laughs> Shuck, the way you act, you think you never drill nobody for. And what's different about this killer? Oh, quit it. Only difference I can see is you made a little more cash out of it. Let me see. After the foreclosure, there was almost 5000 left over for you, wasn't there? I hope you're enjoying yourself. Don't get mad at the boss, Jay. <laughs> you ought to be used to Rudd by now. He can have his fun without talking about things like this, can't he? Ah, forget it, Jay. <laughs> no offense, man. Hey, what's delaying that barkeep? I'm getting thirsty. He should be a... What in blazes is happening outside? Well, I don't know. A jailbreak. Come on. Maybe it's Rusty. I don't know if it is. The English is the jailer. The one fellers mad. They got Rusty with them. Hey, stop them, fellers. Shoot them. Shoot them down. It's too dark to take good aim. How are you going to hit fellas on horses that can travel like them? They're out of sight already. And where's the marshal? Where in thunder is he? They're calling me, Rudd. You blasted fool. You lost your prisoner. I got fellas raising a posse right now. How did it happen? I ain't sure yet. Things happen too blame fast. First I knew there was a redskin had the jailer down, the big mass fella standing there with guns in both hands. Then the jail was open and they was on the way. With Rusty. I ought to have your badge for this, Marshal. Try to get it and welcome. If you think you could do better, maybe I can fix it for you to take my place. Bob, you yeah. keep off it. The rest of you guys follow me. Now what? Gosh, I hate to think of Rusty going free. He knows too blame much. You'll be caught again. Yeah, maybe. You bet he will. And breaking jail like this is all that was needed to make him look guilty for sure. But there's something I can't figure. Yeah? Why in blazes did he surrender to the law and then break jail afterwards? It don't make sense. Maybe it don't. But there's one thing that will. Huh? Rusty hanging from the end of a rope. Lone Ranger and Tonto had no difficulty throwing the posse off their trail. They circled back to camp, and when they were sure of their safety, the masked man turned to Rusty and... I want all the facts this time, Rusty. Everything you know and everything you suspect. Mind if I ask a question first? Go ahead. You told me to give myself up to the law. And the next thing I know, you bust me out of jail. Now, why is that? I had two reasons. Yeah? For one, I haven't had the chance to discuss the killing with you in detail. Well, I've told you near all of it. The second reason would have been enough. Tonto was in town today. He heard lynch talk. Lynch talk? Started by Rudd, I'll bet. I can't say, but it's possible. Well, what more do you want to know about the killing? You told me that at one time you worked for Bull Brannigan. That's right. And I had reason to think he and Rudd was in cahoots in Rudd's dirty work. So I told Bull off and asked for my time. And everyone knew you'd quarreled? Of course. Then you started in the cattle business for yourself, huh? Yeah. Bought a two-bit spread neighbor in the Bull. That's when the fireworks really began. I was blame sure he was rustling my cattle, but he got the jump on me by spreading word that I was rustling his. I served warning for him to stop it. That got around, too. So, naturally, when Bull was shot, you were the first person suspected. Well, that's the size of it. I wouldn't have lit out, though, if it hadn't been for Rudd. I knew he was out to nail my hide to the wall, and with the weight he pulls and the lying witnesses he could get together, I wouldn't have had a chance. Why would Rudd be concerned? Well, that's where you got me, friend. Rusty, I think if I were a crook and I'd committed a crime... I'd do everything I could to get someone else convicted. I'd feel safer. I get it. Meaning that maybe Rudd killed Bull, huh? Did he gain by Bull's death? 
Not that I know of. What was the connection between them? Well, what I found out when I worked for Bull was this. Bull owned the ranch, but Rudd had a sizable mortgage on it. Looked to me like uh, Rudd was a real boss and Bull held title with a note hanging over his head all the time just to make it look good. And Bull was rustling? If you're asking me that I have honest-to-gosh proof on it, I'll, I'll have to tell you no. But if you want my opinion, and I'll say he was. I'd swear to it, by golly. Just one thing more, Rusty. Yeah? You should know most of Rudd's men pretty well. Every gang of crooks has at least one weak member. Which one is it here? That one's easy. Yes? Slick. Slick? Well, that's the only handle he's got that anybody knows of. He's a little weasel-faced hombre. I bet ain't got the gumption of a scared hen. Slick, eh? Huh? Tonto, uh-huh. remember that fellow. I think it may pay us to have a talk with him. It was just before dawn when two figures dismounted at a distance, then silently approached the shack near Apache Ridge where Slick lived. This must be the place, Tonto. Uh, quiet. I'll try the door. Come on. Sleep. There's a lamp on that shelf. Light it. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. It's slick, all right. The answer's Rusty's description. Slick. Wake up. What? What? Hey! You're coming with us, Slick. Cut the mask, man. Get up. You. No, you don't. Let him go. Let him go. Help, help. Gag him, Tonto. Huh? No, wait. No, no. Got it. He got him. All right, Tonto. Back to the horses. The following morning, Jay burst into Rudd's office and... Rudd! Jay, can't you come into my office without busting in? I got reason to. Huh? Slick's gone. Gone? Well, what do you mean? I stopped by his place this morning. You should have seen it. Lamp smashed, table knocked over, the whole place a mess. Oh, what is it? Will you hear the rest of it? You know that old fella lives just beyond Slick? And get on with it. He says he heard yells, and when he looked out his window, he seen a masked man and a redskin heading off. And Slick with him. They got Slick? What does it look like? That yellow-livered fool will tell everything he knows. I savvy that as much as you do. By heavens, he's got to be found. Get the boys together. Tell them they're riding. We can't have the law knowing about this. Down to leave town on the quiet. They're to comb the countryside till them fellows are found. Right. Uh, wait. Yeah? And tell them this. Right now, it ain't the mask, fella. It ain't the engine. It ain't Rusty we gotta worry about. It's Slick's big mouth. Uh-huh. When they locate them fellas before they do anything else, they're to drill Slick. What's that? You wanna be hung on account of him? Uh, no. Then see to it you get that order straight. Now on your way. I'll ride with him. Slick was taken to the masked man's camp, and as the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein. Oh, 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 Right. Help him down and take off his gag, Kimosabe. Tonto, do that. Stand still, and you'll be allowed to talk. There. There, gang gone. What do you want with me? I never done you no harm, Rusty. We was always friends. Tell him we was friends, won't you? Why, Listen, you Rusty. blasted sidewinder, we was never friends. <sighs> And if you'd ever got the chance to knife me, you'd have done it. No, that ain't so, Rusty. You got me all wrong. Why, I never Quiet. did. Quiet. Well, but I do. The masked fella's running things slick. Don't talk to me. What he says goes. But please, I slick, don't know. I think you know certain things we'd find useful. I, I don't know what you mean. For instance, what connection there was between Bull Brannigan and Rudd Mallory. I, I don't and know. And who might have been Bull's real killer. I don't know where you fellas got the idea. I could tell you anything. Honest, you I don't refuse know. refuse to talk? I would if I could. Honest, I would. But it's I tell too you. too bad, Slick. Huh? Too bad. Perhaps you don't know anything. But in that case, it's unfortunate for you. You, you mean... Take him away, Tonto. Uh-huh. Okay, you... No, wait. What, what are you going to do? You Tonto, Tonto knows do all plenty. the tricks the Indians use for making prisoners talk slick. Think it over. No, but I'm not going to I don't know nothing. Very well. Do as I said, Tonto. Take him away. No, yeah, please, please, don't. No. Don't let the Indians do anything, please. Then you kill me. You kill refuse me. the chance to talk slick. Now take the consequences. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Slick, unaware that neither Tonto nor the masked man would resort to torture to make him talk, was led by his fear to answer the Lone Ranger's questions. When the masked man had finished, he returned to Rusty and... What'd you find out? Anything that'll help? Rusty, I learned quite a bit. Yeah? Slick claims that Jay Sampson did the actual killing, although Rudd was alone. He says that he himself wasn't there, but I doubt it. And so do I. That's likely the most important, but not the most interesting of the things he told. Well, what do you mean? Jay Sampson was Bull's nephew and heir. Didn't I tell you that? You didn't. I reckon I must have figured it wasn't important. After all, Jay didn't come into much. Because he was double-crossed by Rudd. Double-crossed? You were right about the connection between Rudd and Bull. Rudd really owned Bull's ranch. They used it to handle stolen cattle. Rudd, however, didn't want to be in a position where he could get into trouble. He gave Bull title to the ranch so that Bull would be responsible. But he retained actual control by making out a note signed by Bull that gave him a mortgage on the ranch for just a few thousand dollars less than its actual value. But how does Jay enter into that? Rudd got Jay to murder his uncle by promising Jay the difference between the mortgage and the value of the ranch. After Bull's death, Rudd bid in the ranch and regained title to it by giving Jay the note and $5,000. In other words, $5,000 was the full amount Jay inherited. Well, should Jay got more than that? He should have received almost $50,000. Why? Because Bull had been saving to repay the mortgage. He had saved almost $45,000. Rudd learned of it, knew where it was kept, and stole it after Bull's death. And without Jay's knowing? Slick claims that Jay doesn't suspect a thing. Oh, boy, wouldn't things happen if Jay was to find out? That's what I thought. I told you Rudd was plenty smart. That proves it. It proves he isn't clever. Huh? Because his trick is going to hang him. Well, I'm hoping for it. We'd better... A posse. Tonto! Uh, what matter? Our camp's been found. Get to the saddle. Tell Slick he rides with me. Uh, Rusty, you ride double with Tonto. Right. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Into the saddle, Slick. Hurry. Hip, yeah. hip, hip, hip with you. Let's, Let's go, Tonto. Come on, get Silver. Down. Did you hear what them fellas yelled? Sounded as though they wanted to get you, Slick. Yeah, and that wasn't no posse. No? No, those were Rudd's men. Rudd's and the dirty polecats wanted to drill me. Come on, boy. Blast it, did you hear what I said? If it was me, they was gunning for. I heard you. And if they'd caught me, they'd have drilled me. Look here, stranger. All I'm asking for now is a chance to get back at them. You'll get your chance. Hurry, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Hello, Silver. How are Oh, 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 boy. Oh, Scout. Well, oh. we got away from him, but I'd rather we'd stay to fight it out. We had nothing to gain by it. Well, we might have. They shot Slick. We'd have had a lot to lose. The double crossing snakes. They were supposed to be my pods. Well, I'll show them. Dismount, Slick. Huh? What for? I said dismount. Don't argue. Uh, what are you going to do? Tonto and I have work to do. For the present, you're staying with Rusty. Oh, you want me to stay here, too? We'll be back for you later. Uh, I wish you'd let me go along. Guard Slick, and you'll be doing your share. Slick, Rusty's armed, and you're not. Don't try to make a break for it. I said I'd get even with them fellas, and I will. I won't try to get away. Work with us, and the law may go easier on you. That's all I can promise, however. I'll take my chances. Keep undercover, Rusty. Don't show yourself to anyone unless you're sure it's us. How soon will you be back? I'm not sure. Tonto's calling on Jay Sampson, and I'm going after the marshal. Huh? The marshal? What for? You'll learn that soon enough. But I can tell you one thing. Yeah? Before tomorrow morning, your innocence is going to be proved. And Rudd and Jay will be where they belong. Which same suits me fine. Come on, get it up, let's go. When Rudd Mallory learned that neither the Lone Ranger nor his companions had been captured, he went to the office of the United States Marshal to complain, then... Blast it. They've been on loose for almost 24 hours. They even had nerve to come back to town this morning after breaking Rusty loose last night. If you wanted to, you could deputize every man in town to go hunting for him. But so far, you haven't done a doggone thing that's been any good. Red, I think I told you last night what you could do if you objected to the way I run my office. A fine lawman you are. I'm appointed to my job. And I don't need to depend on the votes you can swing to keep it. So what you think of me don't interest me none at all. No... Well, we'll see about that. For that matter, you shooting off your mouth about my posse not locating them. How about them gunslingers of yours that was on the hunt? 
From all I heard, they didn't have no better luck. Who told you about that? Oh, I get to hear things. Even heard you didn't want me to know you'd send out your own private searching party. Now, I wonder why. You can just keep right on wondering. You can keep right on going out that door there. I got book work to do. Bless you, Dan. Did I... you hear me? I said get. But now. If you're a disgrace to your office, you ain't no more fit to wear a badge than, than one of my swampers. And by thunder, you'll find going again, me don't pay. <laughs> I see you share my opinion of Rudd, Marshal. What the? Don't slap, brother. How'd you get in here? Your side door was open. You got more nerve than any hombre I ever seen. Marshal, you believe me an outlaw. I'm not. I never heard a crook admit he was yet. Marshal, you've every reason to think I've been working against you. The fact is, however, that I've been working for you. Uh, and I'm to swallow that? Do as you please. But for the present, you listen to me no matter what you believe. Well, talk if you're a mind to. I can't stop you. I came to Apache Ridge because I was convinced Rusty was innocent of the murder of Bull Brannigan. Yeah? I broke him out of jail to save him from a lynching. To get information that only he could give me. Uh-huh. Sure. Just keep it up. I'm believing everything you say. At first, I thought Rusty was innocent. Now, I know he is. That's just dandy. I suppose you can tell me who done the killing, then, if he didn't. The man who just left your office was responsible for it. What's that? I know what I'm talking about. You're accusing Rudd Mallory of that killing? I said he was responsible. Another man did the killing. Who? Jay Sampson. Now I know you're loco. You'll be given a chance to change your mind. Look here, mister. I don't know what your real game is, but I'm going to speak plain. Go ahead. I ain't got no use for Mallory. What's more, I ain't got a heap more for use for Jay. Between you and me, both of them have done their share of killings, which they ain't never paid for. And they're both up to their necks in a dozen crooked deals that I've never been slick enough to prove on them. But this is one killing I'll have to admit they had nothing to do with. And your taking the law into your own hands ain't making me change my mind any. What if I give you proof of what I say? You can't. But I will. How? Come with me. I'll show you. <laughs> I ain't stirring. You'll come. I'm just giving you the chance to come willingly. Uh, meaning that if I don't, you'll make me? Right. Mister, you just made one mistake. Yes? You left your irons in leather. I you what? what? Man, what a draw. You still think I made a mistake? Mister, you didn't. <laughs> With a draw like that, you could spot anybody first chance. Coming? You hold all the aces. Lead the way. During the remainder of the day, Rudd Mallory noticed several things that both puzzled and disturbed him. The United States Marshal disappeared with no word to explain his absence. At the same time, Rudd was unable to locate Jay Sampson. But that night, as he sat alone in his home, someone knocked at the door and... Yeah, who's there? Yeah, who is it? Yeah, it must be deaf. Uh, who? Slick. You don't look glad to see me, Rod. Oh, no, you don't. Before you make another move like that, just take a look at this here gun. Uh, what do you want? <laughs> just a little talk, that's all, Rod. Uh, what about? Uh, well, I thought, first of all, that maybe I might ask you how come you sent the boys out to shoot me. Have any special reason, Rudd? I never. That ain't so. Somebody's been lying to you. Bullets don't lie. Huh? I heard the boys yell to get me, Rudd, and that ain't all. Them bullets come mighty close. You've made a mistake. I don't know where you got that notion, but... it's but... true all the same. Slick, we've always been pards, wasn't we? I always treated you right, paid you good. You ain't got no call to say I'd double-cross you. Ah, uh, you skunk. You'd double-cross your own brother if you had one and seen a profit in it. Listen, Slick. Recollect what I just said? Huh? Bullets don't lie, I said. Well, I got a notion bullets will show you just what I think of you. No, Slick, you, you wouldn't shoot me, would you? you? You'd hang for it, you... I ain't so sure it wouldn't be worth hanging. Don't shoot. I ain't. You won't? No. <sighs> Slick, don't, don't scare me like that. Gosh, I really think... I won't shoot you, Rudd. I'm leaving that job up to another fella. What? What would happen to you, Rudd, if Jay was to learn that at the same time he got a measly 5000 for shooting Brannigan, you helped yourself to almost ten times as much? Slick, you ain't told him, have you? How do you think he'd like to know that you stole his uncle's saving all the time pretending to be his friend? What's got into you, Slick? I never figured you'd turn on me There's like a lot this. of things you never figured. Listen. Yeah? Keep your mouth shut about all this, and I'll split 50-50 with you. 
I will, Slick. You, you can trust my word. Not unless you changed it in the last five minutes. Don't tell Jay what you know. That's all I ask. You you won't regret it. You won't lose by it. Well, that's how I was tricked. Jay! You make a killer out of me and treat me in the bargain. Now put down that gun. Have you all gone loco? You, you don't know what you're doing. You're... You're the first time I do know what I'm doing. Jay! Take it! Hold oh, my hand! My hand! Smash! What the... Hey, where you are. I'm arresting all three of you. The marshal. Yes, Rod, the marshal. What's more, he heard every last word that was said in here. Which say means that you skunks will get what's been coming to you for a long time. You, you can't arrest me, Marshal. You, you know yourself, Rusty here is a killer. Shut up. I'm free to admit I always figured he was. And I tried awful hard to keep from learning the truth. But thanks to this here mass fella, I've been put straight on the whole deal. I never killed Bull. Jay did. Because you put him up to it. No, no, he done it by himself. I never knew about it till afterwards. You devil and squealer. You think I'm going to take all the blame by myself? You do. You're even crazier than I think you are. Wait till I get you in court. Blast you, Rudd. If you don't hang, it won't be my fault. Marshal, you wouldn't take the word of a, of a confessed killer, would you? In this case, I would. Marshal. Yeah? You're convinced now that Rusty was entirely innocent? <laughs> It'd look awful funny if I said it wasn't. Another thing. Slick here is plenty against him. But remember, he helped us pin the guilt where it belonged. I won't forget. Thanks, stranger. I don't reckon they'll just be turning me loose. But at least you treated me fair. I'll remember it, too. Remember it the next time you think of going crooked. Now, one thing, stranger. Yes? And the way things turned out, it's plain enough that Jay was outside listening. But where was he? I never seen him till he went busting in the door. Tonto and I had that arranged between us. Tonto took Jay prisoner and held him on the far side of the house. Jay would never have talked if he'd known you were here. Well, hardly. Well, Marshal, let's get these hombres to jail. Yeah. Oh, there's another thing, too, stranger, I want to ask you. Oh, well, I'll be here. Where did that mask fell on the engine get to? <laughs> Listen a second. Oh, Silver, <laughs> Hear that? Oh, where's he going? Why'd he clear out? Those are questions I can't answer, Marshal. But I can tell you one thing that'll surprise you. Yeah? You just met the Lone Ranger and never knew it. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.